actually requiring their students to attend out of class and of course uh, at an additional cost tutorial um, uh, in order to 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 finance the, the the debt burden they have even if these tutorials were not ne were not uh, necessarily what the students uh, require and and so addressing the debt issue of teachers and uh, and the cultural issue uh, of of their need to to uh, uh, to maintain a particular uh, social status through the level of spending is, is something the government needs to do also okay yes sir uh, uh, my name is Hitesh Gurbani. I work in financial services. Um, I just have a question regarding the telecoms debacle that we've uh, witnessed over the last half decade. Um, I know you proposed something to the NTC and uh, the MICT a few weeks ago um, regarding lowering the concession rate and uh, raising the concession rate for the new 3G licenses that they're going to be auctioning next month. But it looks like they're going to go ahead with the auction anyway. And uh, with the finance ministry being the largest stakeholder of, uh, shareholder, sorry, of the TOT and the CAT, there's obviously going to be an enormous loss of revenue over the next five to eight years when the concessions start to expire. Um, obviously, if, if the three large telecoms get these licenses, they're going to migrate most of their customers to the new frequencies and uh, will be paying less tax. So how do you expect to fill in the gap? And... Uh, in the gap. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, a, it's a complicated issue. I give you the basic principle. Uh, the basic principle is, as you say, the, uh, uh, the concession agreements um, is, 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 is a mess and has a, a major constraint on investment in the Thai telecommunication sector over the past several years. Uh, so what we wanted to do simply was to create a level playing field um, whereby all players uh, uh, have the same uh, lights operating under the same license uh, with the same spectrum of frequencies uh, with the same you know taxation system call it if I may call it that uh, with also open access uh, to for, for, for fresh um, for new players um, and also a system whereby investment occurs according to market needs and not because regulation uh, forces them to make unnecessary investment and ideally we really ought to uh, amend these concessions and turn them to licenses before uh, the 3G auction was to take place, but the NTC doesn't agree. They have their point of view. Uh, they are an independent agency, so we must live with that constraint. But the fact that they are going ahead uh, with the um, uh, 2,100 megahertz auction uh, is not necessarily uh, uh, a barrier towards us f uh, going forward with the uh, concession amendment. So we are moving ahead. Uh, today I met with some, some key private sector players. Um, we have broad agreement now as to the legal process, the commercial process, uh, the individual requirements of all stakeholders. And, um, and we believe it is a genuine win-win uh, um, potential. Uh, very complicated, um, but you know, we're committed to, to seeing whether we could achieve this, this, this really landmark uh, landmark reformation yeah hey, very quickly Larry and we'll wrap things up here <coughs> it is quick um, in Thailand more than one in five families is a single mother and it is gr doubled in the last 10 years and is continuing to increase now according to the interviews I've done with many of them they're facing three problems one is the problem of, of debt uh, the, the, the loan sharks, you're dealing with that. The other two problems is retraining and education. Most of them actually had to leave school before they, they reached ninth year. Uh, they need access to education and retraining that's free. They can't afford it. These are, these are essentially poor people. Yeah. And, and thirdly, they need access when they are working to free creches on the job. What is the government doing in, in regards to the, the last two? 
Um, I don't know about the last one. Uh, I have to say, tell you that. I'll you have to ask some of my colleagues on uh, free training. Um, actually, uh, it usually goes together with the first problem of debt. Um, we found, for example, that as I mentioned to you, about 800,000 uh, registered for for help. We've so far managed to have about half, about 400,000. Out of the, the half that we haven't yet been able to refinance, it's largely because that income just doesn't justify the banks taking on that, 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 uh, that risk. Um, so we, we resolved to not abandon them uh, and have asked ourselves the question as to what we can do in order to enhance uh, that level of income sufficiently so that they would be credit worthy, basically. Um, this will need to be funded and it will in fact be funded by these state-owned banks uh, with the aim of increasing the level of income so that the banks will be in a position to be able to refinance those particular loans. Moreover, the stimulus package that we uh, introduced last year included a uh, vocation training uh, budget um, which uh, was partly designed so that employers who were uh, stra strapped for cash during the time of the economic crisis in the previous year would choose to allow the government to subsidize uh, retraining uh, or upgrading uh, through retraining of their staff uh, on government funding. And um, we were able to retrain, I think, about 200,000 uh, employees through that particular scheme. Um, we want it to be continued. Uh, whether uh, these schemes have so far uh, specifically addressed the single mothers that you mentioned or not, I, I, I can tell you that they have been singled out as a target group. Um, I, I've never been aware, frankly speaking, that we should be targeting them uh, as a specific target group for, for retraining. Um, so again, I, I, I'll, I'll bear that in mind. And uh, thank you for your good advice. I'll, uh, I'll take one last shot here. Since you alluded in the beginning that this might be the last time we have you here before there's an election, um, to what extent you know, do you think the policies that you've talked about tonight will translate into more seats, particularly in the Northeast? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, what is the likelihood you'll have to join with Boom Jai Tai and other members of the coalition again to, to form a government? Why not join up with Pua Thai? <laughs> Are you in talks with them? Seriously, there's, there's, uh, there's no need to assume um, that we have to be on, on opposite sides. I mean, after all, uh, every single Pum Jai Thai MP was on the opposite side when they were members of Thai Rak Thai. Um, so uh, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, almost certainly uh, the next government will be a coalition government. Um, almost certainly, uh, the Democrat will not be able to make significant headway uh, in the next election in the Northeast. Equally certainly, uh, we will be able to retain um, our seats in our traditional strongholds. Uh, Bangkok will be interesting, um, but again, there I believe will prevail. I believe that we'll make significant headway in the North uh, and in the Central Plains. Um, but not sufficient for us to uh, to be a single party government. Um, who we form a coalition with, uh, you know, will, will depend on on who else the public uh, decides to vote for, really. And um, I don't necessarily feel that we need to to rule out anybody. Great. Thanks again for your time and. Um we have on uh, behalf of the FCCT, we have uh, our book that we give pretty much every guest. It's uh, <laughs> The King of Thailand in World Focus uh, about the life of the game. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.